Hey everyone, it's Alex again, and I am back with another award show nominations video. This time bringing to you the nominations for the 21st Annual Critics' Choice Awards. Uh, as you can tell from the name of the title, the Critics' Choice Awards is the only major award show where all the nominees and winners are chosen by professional film and TV critics. Uh, the film awards are chosen by the Broadcast Film Critics Association, and the TV awards are chosen by the Broadcast Television Journalists Association. Now, traditionally, the Critics' Choice Awards have kept their movie and TV awards ceremonies separate. The movie awards ceremony has usually happened in January, and the TV awards ceremony has usually happened in May or June. However, this year, uh, the Critics' Choice Awards have decided to combine both the movie and TV awards into one big three-hour show, similar to the Golden Globes. So as a result, I'm going to be revealing both TV and film nominations today, and this is probably the longest list I'm going to read through, so I'll try and get through these as fast as I can. Uh, before I read the nominations, though, I just want to say a few things. Um, since the last Critics' Choice TV Awards were held last May, for this year's Critics' Choice Awards, all of the TV nominees will only be... Uh, TV shows that have aired from June to December. So anything that aired between January to May is not eligible because it already competed at the last Critics' Choice TV Awards. So certain shows will not make an appearance on here, like Game of Thrones, Veep, simply because they have not aired any new episodes yet since the last Critics' Choice TV Awards. So as a result, this list is going to look very different from the list of TV nominees you'd see at the Golden Globes or the Emmys. Uh, the Film Awards, though, will, lie, will still cover the entire year of 2015 from January to December. And, but unlike the TV Awards, the Film Awards are actually very close to what we'll see at the Oscars. And the Critics' Choice Awards are often cited as one of the best predictors of the Oscars. You know, they don't always line up with the Oscars, but most of the time they do. And also what I wanted to say is that the Critics' Choice Awards is, one of, is the only award show to give out awards and categories that you won't see at any other award show. Uh, for instance, um, there are several categories to, that honor action movies, like Best Action Movie, Best Actor and Actress in an Action Movie. Um, and then there's also an award to honor uh, Young Performers, the Best Young Actor or Actress Award which is given to an actor or an actress under the age of 21. And then there's also a category for best sci-fi or horror film, and things like that. But otherwise, most of the other categories are categories that you would see at the Golden Globes, the Oscars, etc. So with that being said, it's now time to take a look at what the critics think are the most award-worthy TV shows and movies of the year. So let's get started and I'm going to reveal the television nominees first. Best Supporting Actor in a Comedy Series Andre Brower, Brooklyn Nine-Nine Jamie Camille, Jane the Virgin Jay Duplass, Transparent Neil Flynn, The Middle Keegan-Michael Key, Playing House Mel Rodriguez, Getting On Best Supporting Actress in a Comedy Series Mayim Bialik, the Big Bang Theory, Heather Donahue, You're the Worst, Allison Janney, Mom, Judith Light, Transparent, Niecy Nash, Getting On, Eden Share, The Middle, Best Actor in a Comedy Series, Anthony Anderson, Blackish, Aziz Ansari, Master of None, Will Forte, The Last Man on Earth, Randall Park, Fresh Off the Boat, Fred Savage, The Grinder, Jeffrey Tambor, Transparent. Best Actress in a Comedy Series. Rachel Bloom, Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. Aya Cash, You're the Worst. Wendy McClendon Covey, The Goldbergs. Gina Rodriguez, Jane the Virgin. Tracy Ellis Ross, Blackish. Constance Wu, Fresh Off the Boat. Best Guest Actor or Actress in a Comedy Series. Ellen Burstyn, Mom. Angelica Houston, Transparent. Cherry Jones, Transparent. Jennifer Lewis, Blackish. 
Timothy Oliphant, The Grinder, John Slattery, Wet Hot American Summer, First Day of Camp. Best Comedy Series, Blackish, Catastrophe, Jane the Virgin, The Last Man on Earth, Master of None, Transparent, You're the Worst. Best Animated Series, Bob's Burgers, Bojack Horseman, The Simpsons, South Park, Star Wars Rebels. Best Structured Reality Show, Antiques Roadshow, Inside the Actors Studio, Mythbusters, Project Greenlight, Shark Tank, Undercover Boss. Best Unstructured Reality Show, Anthony Bourdain, Parts Unknown, Cops, Deadliest Catch, Intervention, Naked and Afraid, Pawn Stars. Best Reality Competition Show, The Amazing Race, Chopped, Face Off, MasterChef Junior, Survivor, The Voice. Best Reality Show Host, Ted Allen, Chopped, Phil Kogan, The Amazing Race, James Lipton, Inside the Actors Studio, Jane Lynch, Hollywood Game Night, Jeff Probst, Survivor, Gordon Ramsay, Hell's Kitchen. Best Talk Show, The Daily Show with Jon Stewart, The Graham Norton Show, Jimmy Kimmel Live, Last Week Tonight with John Oliver, The Late Late Show with James Corden, The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon. Best Supporting Actor in a TV Movie or Limited Series, David Allen Greer, The Wiz Live, Nee Yo, The Wiz Live, Nick Offerman, Fargo, Jesse Plemons, Fargo, Raul Trujillo, Saints and Strangers, Bokeem Woodbine, Fargo. Best Supporting Actress in a TV Movie or Limited Series, Mary J. Blige, The Wiz Live, Laura Haddock, Luther, Kristen Milioti, Fargo, Sarah Paulson, American Horror Story Hotel, Winona Ryder, Show Me a Hero, Jean Smart, Fargo. Best Actor in a TV Movie or Limited Series, Wes Bentley, American Horror Story Hotel, Martin Clunes, Arthur and George, Idris Elba, Luther, Oscar Isaac, Show Me a Hero, Vincent Carthizer, Saints and Strangers, Patrick Wilson, Fargo. Best Actress in a TV Movie or Limited Series, Kathy Bates, American Horror Story Hotel, Kirsten Dunst, Fargo, Sarah Hay, Flesh and Bone, Olivia Allen Lind, Dolly Parton's Coat of Many Colors, Rachel McAdams, True Detective, Shanice Williams, The Wiz Live. Best TV Movie or Limited Series, Childhood's End, Fargo, Luther, Saints and Strangers, Show Me a Hero, The Wiz Live. Best Supporting Actor in a Drama Series, Clayton Crawford, Rectify, Christopher Eccleston, The Leftovers, Andre Holland, The Nick, Jonathan Jackson, Nashville, Rufus Sewell, The Man in the High Castle, Christian Slater, Mr. Robot. Best Supporting Actress in a Drama Series Anne Dowd, The Leftovers Regina King, The Leftovers Helen McCrory, Penny Dreadful Hayden Panettiere, Nashville Maura Tierney, The Affair Constance Zimmer, Unreal Best Actor in a Drama Series Hugh Dancy, Hannibal Rami Malek, Mr. Robot Clive Owen, The Nick Liev Schreiber, Ray Donovan, Justin Thoreau, The Leftovers, Aidan Young, Rectify. Best Actress in a Drama Series, Shiri Appleby, Unreal, Carrie Coon, The Leftovers, Viola Davis, How to Get Away with Murder, Eva Green, Penny Dreadful, Taraji P. Henson, Empire, Kristen Ritter, Jessica Jones. 
Best Guest Actor or Actress in a Drama Series. Richard Armitage, Hannibal. Justin Kirk, Manhattan. Patti Lupone, Penny Dreadful. Margot Martindale, The Good Wife. Marissa Tomei, Empire. B.D. Wong, Mr. Robot. And finally, Best Drama Series. Empire, The Nick, The Leftovers, Mr. Robot, Penny Dreadful, Rectify, Unreal. And now onto the film nominations. Best Art Direction, Bridge of Spies, production design by Adam Stockhausen, set decoration by Rena DeAngelo. Brooklyn, production design by Francois Seguin, set decoration by Jennifer Oman and Louise, Trem <coughs> Louise Trembley. Carol, production design by Judy Becker, set decoration by Heather Lef <coughs> Leffler. The Danish Girl, production design by Eve Stewart, set decoration by Michael Standish. Mad Max Fury Road, production design and set decoration by Colin Gibson. The Martian, production design by Arthur Max, set decoration by Celia Bobak. Best Cinematography, Ed Lockman, Carol, Robert Richardson, The Hateful Eight, John Seal, Mad Max Fury Road, Darius Wolski, The Martian, Emmanuel Lubezki, The Revenant, Roger Deakins, Sicario. Best Costume Design, Odile Dix Moreau, Brooklyn, Sandy Powell, Carol, Sandy Powell, Cinderella, Paco Delgado, The Danish Girl, Jenny Bevan, Mad Max Fury Road. Best Film Editing, Hank Corwin, The Big Short, Margaret Sixel, Mad Max Fury Road, Pietro Scalia, The Martian, Stephen Mirioni, The Revenant, Tom McArdle, Spotlight. Best Hair and Makeup, uh, for here they only list the films and not the actual makeup artists. Why? I don't know, but that's the way it is. Black Mass, Carol, The Danish Girl, The Hateful Eight, Mad Max Fury Road, The Revenant. Best Original Score, Carter Burwell, Carol, Ennio Morricone, The Hateful Eight, Ryuichi Sakamoto and Alva Noto, The Revenant, Johan Johansson, Sicario, Howard Shore, Spotlight. Best Original Song, Love Me Like You Do from Fifty Shades of Grey. Music and lyrics by Max Martin, Savan Koteka, Ali Payami, and Ilya Salmanzeda. One Kind of Love from Love and Mercy. Music and lyrics by Brian Wilson and Scott Bennett. See You Again from Furious 7. Music and lyrics by Justin Franks, Andrew Cedar, Charlie Puth, and Cameron Thomas. Simple Song Number 3 from Youth. Music and lyrics by David Lang. Till It Happens to You from The Hunting Ground. Music and lyrics by Lady Gaga and Diane Warren. Writings on the Wall from Spectre. Music and lyrics by Sam Smith and Jimmy Napes. Best Visual Effects. Again, for this category, they only list the films and not the actual technicians along with the film. Ex Machina, Jurassic World, Mad Max Fury Road, The Martian, The Revenant, The Walk. Best Action Movie, Furious 7, Jurassic World, Mad Max Fury Road, Mission Impossible Rogue Nation, Sicario. Best Actor in an Action Movie. Daniel Craig, Spectre. Tom Cruise, Mission Impossible Rogue Nation. Tom Hardy, Mad Max Fury Road. Chris Pratt, Jurassic World. Paul Rudd, Ant-Man. Best Actress in an Action Movie. Emily Blunt, Sicario. Rebecca Ferguson, Mission Impossible Rogue Nation. Bryce Dallas Howard, Jurassic World. Jennifer Lawrence, The Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 2. Charlize Theron, Mad Max Fury Road. Best Animated Feature, Anomalisa, The Good Dinosaur, Inside Out, 
the Peanuts movie, Shaun the Sheep movie, Best Comedy movie, The Big Short, Inside Out, Joy, Sisters, Spy, Trainwreck, Best Actor in a Comedy movie, Christian Bale, The Big Short, Steve Carell, The Big Short, Robert De Niro, The Intern, Bill Hader, Trainwreck, Jason Statham, Spy. Best Actress in a Comedy Movie Tina Fey, Sisters, Jennifer Lawrence, Joy, Melissa McCarthy, Spy, Amy Schumer, Trainwreck, Lily Tomlin, Grandma. Best Documentary Feature Amy, Cartel Land, Going Clear, Scientology in the Prison of Belief, He Named Me Malala, The Look of Silence, Where to Invade Next. Best Foreign Language Film The Assassin, Taiwan, Goodnight Mommy, Austria, Mustang, France, The Second Mother, Brazil, Son of Saul, Hungary. Best Sci-Fi or Horror Movie Ex Machina, It Follows, Jurassic World, Mad Max Fury Road, The Martian. Best Original Screenplay Matt Charman, Ethan Cohen, and Joel Cohen, Bridge of Spies. Alex Garland, Ex Machina. Quentin Tarantino, The Hateful Eight. Pete Docter, Meg LaFove, and Josh Cooley, Inside Out. Josh Singer and Tom McCarthy, Spotlight. Best Adapted Screenplay. Charles Randolph and Adam McKay, The Big Short, based on the book by Michael Lewis. Nick Hornby, Brooklyn based on the novel by Colm Toybean. Drew Goddard, The Martian, based on the novel by Andy Weir. Emma Donahue, Room, based on her own novel. Aaron Sorkin, Steve Jobs, based on the book by Walter Isaacson. Best Young Actor or Actress. Abraham Ada, Beasts of No Nation. R.J. Seiler, me and Earl and the Dying Girl, Shamik Moore, Dope, Milo Parker, Mr. Holmes, Jacob Tremblay, Room. Best Supporting Actor, Paul Dano, Love and Mercy, Tom Hardy, The Revenant, Mark Ruffalo, Spotlight, Mark Rylance, Bridge of Spies, Michael Shannon, 99 Homes, Sylvester Stallone, Creed. Best Supporting Actress Jennifer Jason Lee, The Hateful Eight Rooney Mara, Carol Rachel McAdams, Spotlight Helen Mirren, Trumbo Alicia Vikander, The Danish Girl Kate Winslet, Steve Jobs Best Actor Brian Cranston, Trumbo Matt Damon, The Martian Johnny Depp, Black Mass Leonardo DiCaprio, The Revenant Michael Fassbender, Steve Jobs. Eddie Redmayne, The Danish Girl. Best Actress. Kate Blanchett, Carol. Brie Larson, Room. Jennifer Lawrence, Joy. Charlotte Rampling, 45 Years. Saoirse Ronan, Brooklyn. Charlize Theron, Mad Max Fury Road. Best Acting Ensemble. The Big Short, The Hateful Eight, Spotlight, Straight Outta Compton, Trumbo. Best Director, Steven Spielberg, Bridge of Spies, Todd Haynes, Carol, George Miller, Mad Max, Fury Road, Ridley Scott, The Martian, Alejandro Gonzalez in Uritu, The Revenant, Tom McCarthy, Spotlight, <clears throat> and finally, Best Picture, The Big Short, Bridge of Spies, Brooklyn, Carol, Mad Max Fury Road, The Martian, The Revenant, Room, Sicario, Spotlight. And those are the nominees for the 21st Annual Critics' Choice Awards. Now it's time for me to give my thoughts. Now for the TV nominations, uh, since there's so many of them here, I'm not really going to break them down one by one because admittedly, a lot of these specific shows, since they're only from 
the last half of the year, I haven't really seen too much of them, so I can't really say which ones I like and which ones I don't like. Uh, but from what I see here, from all the material that was eligible, I guess there's not really too much to complain about. Uh, like, if you really like The Wiz Live, then you should be happy for all the nominations it got there. Um, Fargo, if you're a big fan of Fargo, uh, you should be very happy with all the nominations there. Um, if you're one of the people who doesn't like Lady Gaga being on American Horror Story Hotel, you can breathe a sigh of relief that she's not nominated here. Um, yeah, so, I mean, it looks pretty solid, I guess, for the most part. Now on to film. Best Art Direction, um, all excellent nominees. I can't complain about any of them. Um, I still haven't seen Carol or the Danish Girl. They, they finally come to... They both come to my area on Christmas Day. Carol was originally supposed to come here in January, but due to all the buzz it's receiving, it's been pushed back to Christmas, so that way we can see it before the Oscar nominations come out, because Carol is expected to be one of the top contenders and get nominated for almost for pretty much everything. But all these sets in, in the movie, but from the trailers I've seen for Carol and the Danish Girl, those sets look incredible. And for the other four movies, all of which ha I have seen, those sets all look incredible. And it's a very, and I like how diverse this category is because often with, uh, with best art direction, it's a, you often typically have movie sets. Of, you often have sets of movies taking place in older times nominated here, which is understandable because building those sets will often require a great deal more, a great deal more of historical research to make sure that everything looks authentic, but in this case you not only had to create that authenticity in an older time period, but also in like fu a future post-apocalyptic time period with Mad Max Fury Road and just the future in general with The Martian. Because The Martian, if you've seen that, it's clearly not a post-apocalyptic depressing movie. Best Cinematography? Uh, I love all these nominees here. Um, I haven't seen The Hateful Eight yet or The Revenant. Uh, the Hateful Eight comes here New Year's Day. Got pushed back a week because it was originally supposed to come out on January 8th in my area. But that's when The Revenant's coming out. Um, so I'll have to wait a while to see that. But just from the posters and the trailers, the, all those movies look incredible with their cinematography. All these other, but all the other movies I've seen, Mad Max, Fury Road, The Martian, and Sicario, all of them look incredible. And, uh, and if Roger Deakins should get an Oscar nomination for Sicario, it'll be his 13th Oscar nomination, and Deakins has still never won an Oscar. I think, I'll have to check, but I think he may hold the record for most Oscar nominations for cinematography without ever winning. And with Mad Max, Fury Road, the cinematographer there, John Seal, he actually had to be persuaded to come out of retirement to do this movie, and obviously it's a good thing he did because that movie, you know, action films aren't always known for having great cinematography, but if Mad Max Fury Road did not have the great cinematography that it had, the film would not have been as great. Of course, there were other things in coming into play that helped make Mad Max Fury Road a great movie, but if it did not have great cinematography in that post-apocalyptic desert wasteland, then there really would have been no chance for any of the other for any of the other elements to work properly as well. Uh, and of course, The Martian, uh, beautiful cinematography there, and they they sh <clears throat> and they shot in many real-life desert locations on Earth, particularly in the Wadi Rum Desert in Jordan, to try and capture that red Martian look and they did so beautifully, and in 3D, too. I mean, the 3D for The Martian was incredible. It wasn't necessarily, it wasn't necessarily like boing, 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 things coming out of the screen towards your eye. Like, this felt, you felt as if you were actually on Mars with Matt Damon. And Best Costume Design, all these nominees look excellent. And even Mad Max Fury Road, you know, that's typically a film you don't see nominated for costume design. But those costumes look incredible, and I, and, I, and I only hope that they were at least comfortable to wear, because 
they shot all of Mad, Mad Max Fury Road in a real desert, no green screens, and, you know, even without costumes, filming in a desert can be extremely hot, and I only hope it didn't make the actors too much more hot than they would have been without wearing those costumes, but those costumes did look incredible. But all the other nominees here, Brooklyn, Carol, Cinderella, the Danish girl, no surprise to see them here because, you know, period costumes always tend to get these nominations because, like with art direction, period costumes require a lot more effort and research to make them look good. Whereas if, you, if it was set in the modern day, you can often just buy modern clothes, but here you have to not only buy and repair clothes, but sometimes you have to make them completely from scratch using old photographs and drawings as inspiration. Best film editing, can't complain there. Best hair and makeup, can't complain there at all. Best original score, uh, can't complain there. Best song, uh, I'm surprised this lineup is very similar to the Golden Globes because the Critics' Choice Awards usually like to mix and mingle things a bit and throw in some songs that weren't nominated at the Golden Globes but will be nominated at the Oscars. But I guess, you know, apart from Till It Happens to You, which is the song by Lady Gaga from the documentary The Hunting Ground, and it's a song about rape, all the other five nominees here are, were nominated at the Golden Globes. But I guess it goes to show that this year hasn't been a particularly strong year for movie songs. There hasn't been a song that's become like a mass hit and like resonated with people everywhere, like Let It Go from Frozen or Glory from Selma. Both of those songs won the Oscar for Best Original Song and won uh, the Critics' Choice Award and for Best Original Song. Um, but before those songs won their awards, or as they were winning their awards, they were becoming like big, huge radio hits. With the exception of See You Again and Love Me Like You Do, I can't really recall hearing these songs on the radio too many times. So it'll be interesting to see what happens when the Oscar nominations come out, to see if their song nominees will be very similar or very different from this. Uh, best visual effects? Um, I still haven't seen Jurassic World, but, you know, just based on the trailers and everything, and just based on, you know, the fact that dinosaurs play a central part of the movie and, and the real dinosaurs have been extinct for 65 million years, I can't really complain about it being nominated against all the other films on the list. Um, best action movie? Sicario is a bit of a stretch to call an action movie as it feels more like uh, a procedural when there are some action sequences, you know, because it's about trying to track down Mexican drug cartels. They are very tense and nail-biting, especially in like the last half hour. So, and best actor and actress in an action movie? Uh, can't really complain about that. Uh, best Animated Feature, same exact lineup as the Golden Globes. Uh, can't really complain about that. Best Comedy Movie. I'm kind of surprised to see Inside Out on here. Not that that's a bad thing. I mean, it certainly has its comedic moments, but it certainly had its very dramatic moments, too. Um, best Actor and Actress in a Comedy Movie. Uh, they look pretty solid, except for, and I'm, I know I'm going to get a lot of flack for this because a lot of people who I've talked to on Facebook about this think I'm crazy for this, but I absolutely hated Jason Statham's performance in Spy. I thought he was so freaking annoying. He was just chewing up the scenery and overacting so much, I did not find it funny at all. And, of course, people who didn't like what I said fought fought back at me and said, that's the whole point of his character. That's how Jason Statham is. We love it when he overacts. He's supposed to do that. That's the whole point of this movie. But yelling all your lines and chewing the scenery, that is not great acting. I mean, Josh Gad yelled all his lines in Pixels, and while his performance was in Pixels was way worse than Jason Statham's performance in Spy, I do not like when any actor yells all of their lines for an entire movie, no matter if the movie is good or bad. If you yell your lines for the entire movie, it detracts from your performance. So I'm not happy at all to see him on here. Otherwise, I am happy for all the others. I'm, I'm glad Bill Hader's on here. I completely forgot to mention him in my Golden Globes video because I was shocked he didn't get nominated for Trainwreck there, but I'm glad he's nominated here. And uh, Robert De Niro in The Intern, 
I, I thought he would have gotten a Golden Globe nomination because The Intern was actually a surprisingly okay movie. It's not an amazing movie. It's like a 6 out of 10. But De Niro was really good in that. It didn't feel like he was just in it for the paycheck. I think he really wanted to try something different than what he's done before. You know, I think he really, I think he really had a good time with this. Uh, best documentary feature, not surprised there. Best foreign language film, not surprised really with many of these nominees. Same with best sci-fi or horror movie. Uh, best original and adapted screenplay, that looks very good. I'm so glad The Martian is on here for best adapted screenplay because that is truly the best screenplay of the year in my opinion. Uh, best young actor or actress. Usually every year there is a mix of male and female nominees, but this year all the nominees are male performers, which is very interesting. I mean, I don't, there's, I can't really think of any, and there's only five nominees instead of six, which is also very interesting. Because if they did have, but I guess, you know, of course, being the Critics' Choice Awards, you need a minimum number of votes to get nominated. Finding great child actor performances are very hard because in a lot of movies featuring child actors, they're not usually there to give a great dramatic or great comedic performance. They're usually there to be cute or be precocious or, you know, do stuff to make the adult characters look stupid. I can't really complain too much about any of the nominees that are here, but if they were to add a sixth slot and include a female performer in here, there are two that come to mind that I think would have easily deserved a nomination. Uh, the first is Una Lawrence for Southpaw. She played Jake Gyllenhaal and Rachel McAdams, Rachel McAdams' daughter in that movie, and she was excellent, especially in the scenes uh, she shares with Jake Gyllenhaal after the tragic event that happens in Southpaw occurs. If you've seen the trailer, you know exactly what that is. I won't spoil it if you haven't seen it, but she holds her own against Jake Gyllenhaal, and she does an excellent job. And any of you Broadway fans out there, you may recognize Una Lawrence as one of the four original Matildas from Matilda the Musical. I've never seen Matilda the Musical, but I've heard it was excellent. And then the second female performer who would have deserved a nomination on this list is Rafi Cassidy. I hope that's how her name is pronounced. I think it is. Uh, Rafi Cassidy from Tomorrowland. She played the little robot girl, Athena. She was excellent in that movie. Probably maybe the best performance in the movie, I'm, I might add. You know, I mean, she really stole the show. Uh, and, you know, Tomorrowland, it's a movie that's gotten a lot of mixed reception from people. Some really love it, some really hate it. I liked it a lot, although I thought it had a lot of problems, especially in, like, the last 30 minutes, you know, when they're actually in Tomorrowland. But, you know, I can't, I can't really say too much more without giving away a lot of spoilers. But if you haven't seen Tomorrowland yet, I recommend you at least check it out to see whether or not you like it. If you're, like, a big George Clooney fan or a big Hugh Laurie fan, I think you'll really like it. And, he, and if you're a Tim McGraw fan, you should check it out, because Tim McGraw is in this movie, and he plays like a former NASA engineer. No, I'm not kidding. <laughs> then Best Supporting Actor. Um, glad to see a Spotlight member in here, Mark Ruffalo, although I thought it would have been Michael Keaton. Although I think part of the reason why we're not seeing too much of them is because the Spotlight cast is all competing in supporting categories instead of lead, because they want to emphasize the true ensemble nature of the movie. And as a result, I think Michael Keaton and Mark Ruffalo keep splitting voters' opinions on who's better. So <clears throat> we'll see what happens at the Oscars. Best Supporting Actress, can't complain. Best Actor, can't complain. I'm so glad to see Matt Damon in here with uh, Michael Fassbender, Johnny Depp, and Leonardo DiCaprio. I mean, Michael Fassbender is my ideal pick right now, but Matt Damon is incredible in The Martian. Just, uh, best Acting Ensemble. Well, I'm really surprised that it's almost neck and neck with the Screen Actors Guild Awards. I mean, I probably shouldn't be surprised, but I thought, but the screen, but the Critics' Choice Awards like to include a few nominees that the Screen Actors Guild Awards didn't did not include. The Hateful Eight is a good one, but I really thought they would have put The Martian in there, because, and I'm really upset that they didn't, because as I've said in other videos, The Martian has a very huge cast, and. Not one member of the cast is wasted, whether their role is huge or small. Every character has a, has a role to play in the story, and every character's part works perfectly. There is no asymmetry in the connect the dots. There, everything flows with, without being broken. 
And so for that to have not gotten a nomination, I'm very disappointed by that. Uh, best Director, solid lineup, can't complain. And Best Picture, can't complain too much at all. I'm really surprised Sicario got in there. I mean, Sicario does have a very high score on Rotten Tomatoes and has been widely praised by critics, but it, but it hasn't really had the same kind of momentum as movies like Mad Max Fury Road, The Martian, Spotlight, or Carol. But, uh, but this could be a positive sign for the fans of, that, of Sicario that the Oscars might recognize it. Um, we'll see what happens. I mean, I wouldn't say Sicario is the absolute best movie of the year. I'm not sure it'll be in my top ten, but it'll definitely at least be an honorable mention. But if you haven't seen Sicario, go check it out, especially if you're a longtime Emily Blunt fan or if you became an Emily Blunt fan in some of her, her more recent movies like Edge of Tomorrow or Into the Woods. And if you're a Benicio Del Toro fan, Sicario is an absolute must, especially uh, when you get to like the last half hour. And those of you who have seen Sicario, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Well, that's all I have to say for the Critics' Choice Awards. Overall, I'm very pleased with the nominees, uh, and we'll see who wins on uh, Sunday, January 17th, uh, w and T.J. Miller will be hosting the show. I didn't make a separate video about him because they didn't really have a big press announcement like they did with uh, Chris Rock hosting the Oscars and Ricky Gervais hosting the Golden Globes. Admittedly, the only thing I've seen T.J. Miller in is Big Hero 6, so I can't really say whether or not I think he's a good choice for a host, but we'll see. So the Critics' Choice Awards are on Sunday, January 17th at 8 p.m. Eastern Time on the A&E Network, and we'll see who wins then. So see you guys later. Bye.